Hello friends, or as the high schoolers like to say, fam. Before I begin the tutorial, I'd like to show you why you need this tutorial. Has this ever happened to you? Hey Ruthie! That's such a great dress. Did you make it? Yeah. Yeah, I did. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm so proud to call you my best friend. You look mean. You actually look mean more than her. I do now, yeah. I can't blame you. I have a confession to me. I didn't actually make this dress. What? I can't believe you lied to me. Please let me We can't be friends anymore. No. No, this prom is over. No. Wait, please! I'm not about to die alone just because of that one fateful prom. Now the only way to keep that from happening to you is to actually make your own prom dress. Or you know, just wear the one you bought and don't lie about it. First I'm scrolling through the internet to try to get a feel for what is currently in style with prom dresses because I'm not totally up to date. I'm getting sort of elderly, you know, speaking in prom years. Well, in prom years, I'm dead. Anyways, based on what I've seen, I've come up with these simple sketches, but I don't know which one or ones I should make. I will probably number them and put them to an Instagram boat. Oh, well, I was in the middle of that process. Had to be paused, because my dad came home and asked if I wanted to go a couple towns over to... Get some duckies. You excited? Yes. I don't know when people could get excited. <laughs> they can get a little bit excited. Let's go get some ducks! Maybe some chicks! Over here. We're gonna just get three ducks and three chicks and we found out you have to get at least six of each so we were like maybe we came all this way for nothing because that's just too many so we just got this happy meal just kidding we just got six chicks oh and six ducks that is so adorable. i suppose just about now you're wondering what possessed us to get 12 whole birds well i'll let this next clip speak for itself clearance ducks 50 cents yes as many of you know i have a condition where i cannot pass up a good deal regardless of how nugatory the item in question is quick story time the weirdest part about buying these ducks was at the checkout when i tried to make small talk with the cashier and i asked so, do you like working here? And she said, yeah, do you? And I literally had no words. I was so, I'm still so stumped. Anyway, by the time we were home from that endeavor, there were plenty of answers on Instagram. Number four was definitely the winner, but because so many people liked aspects of the other dresses as well, I decided I would make multiple. And because I'm a grown butt woman who can do whatever she wants, I decided to make one design on the fly that I hadn't even shown Instagram. Before making this year's prom dress video, I decided to rewatch last year's extremely subpar prom dress video that I made. And I noticed there are a lot of comments saying I should use this green fabric and trim. Say I never listened you guys. By the way, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I kind of want to make a comment about her teeth. Wait, no, that would be rude. It's okay though. You can make a comment about my teeth. Firstly, let's drape the fabric. Just to get a general idea, it doesn't have to be super specific. Yeah, I think I know what I want to do now. First I did what I suggest all of you do if you're ever unsure of yourself and I made a mock-up out of a cheap fabric first. This will be a simple two-piece dress with a wrap style top and then maybe I'll add some trim at the end just to jazz things up because who doesn't like jazz? Actually, who does like jazz? Anyway, you're going to cut out four pieces that look like this. Each one should be about the width of a forearm and the height of two mugs. Next, place them together two by two and sew all along the edges, excluding the side. Then flip those two pieces right side out and if you feel so inclined, iron them down. But if you're a teenager, you probably won't feel so inclined to do that. Sorry, I didn't mean to be ages. Pin each piece to yourself and make one dart at the top and one dart at the side. And just for reference, my darts ended up being the size of a cockroach and the size of half a banana. After sewing those darts in place, you should have two pieces that look like this. Now it's time to make the back panel. I, at the time, could not find my measuring tape, but I realized this miniature phone cord was the perfect size, but just basically make it as wide as your back is. Then sew that beautiful back panel to your front panel's right sides together. Next, cut out two strips of fabric about as long as your leg and as wide as your hand. If you have a clingy dog roaming about the premises, I suggest you have a slipper on hand so that you can throw it and the dog will chase it and it will buy you a few moments to cut. While the dog is searching, you're also going to cut out two smaller strips. These will serve as straps for your shirt. Okay, now before I go any further, it's April Fool's and my dad's about to get home from work, so I have to do something real quick. Yeah, that works. Yes, kid, you super duper pupper. Good Can you bring me a cup of water? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> April Fool's. Back to the program, you're going to fold your straps in half long ways and then sew all along the edge. Then repeat that same process on your bigger straps. You can use a loop turner to turn those straps right side out. But if you prefer things taking a miserably long time, you could even use a safety pin. I opted to iron my straps down because it made them look really crisp. Then when I re-entered the room, I found this. Add the bigger straps to the outside edges of your wrap shirt. Then add the smaller straps to the back of your bodice. This may seem counterintuitive, but believe me, I am not totally crazy. I find it's a lot easier to get the straps the precise length you want if you do it this way. And it prevents you from having to impersonate a contortionist while reaching to pin behind yourself. To make the skirt, you're gonna wanna lay out your fabric, like so. No. No. I have to 
postpone this operation. The anatomy of the prom dress has to change because the anatomy of the female teenager has changed. Let me explain. There is an appendage, a body part, if you will, on the modern teenage female that wasn't there 20, nay, even 10 years ago. The smartphone. Just pretend I'm holding one. I can't because I'm recording on mine right now. Yeah, that's right. I record on a phone, not a potato. So take that person who commented that it looks like I film on a potato. Anyways, and the teenage specimen has to have somewhere to put this smartphone. Because did you really even go to prom if you didn't flood your Insta story with spunky vids of you lip syncing along to the latest and greatest hip hop tunes? So let's add some pockets. The simplest way to make pockets is to simply add them in when you're cutting out your skirt pieces. It should look like the hips are sporting two large hanging, potentially cancerous moles. Next, either cut your back skirt panel in half or cut a slit about a third of the way down from the top of it. Next, place your front and back skirt panels together and sew all along the outside edges. And if you cut your back panel in half, sew it most of the way shut. Now fasten your seatbelt because here comes the trickery. When you flip the skirt right side out, do not flip the pocket part right side out. Simply iron the outside of it down and no one will ever know that you're harboring an ingenious secret. But I mean, let's be real. Has there ever been a girl who wore a dress with pockets who didn't tell everyone her dress had pockets? To make the waistband, you're going to take a strip of fabric the length of your waist and quadruple fold it, much in the way that you would fold a program for a middle school musical. Then just imagine it's an extremely wide mouth that is biting the waistline of your skirt and sew it in place. Next, hem up that opening in the back and hem the bottom of your skirt with a rolled hem, which means folding it under, folding it under again, and then sewing it in place. When sewing hook and eye closures to your skirt, I highly recommend watching a documentary about polio while you do it. That's what I did and it turned out well. To cheer you up after that, I recommend going to thrift stores and musing about peculiar items. This shirt is so perfect for when you're homeschooled and your parents won't let you wear anything with skulls on it. Bad kid out and about. Oh, I'm coming home. Better get rid of the skull. Now you could just finish the dress here if you want something very simple and chic. But I had some beaded trim I've been aching to use for about a year, so I added some to the top and I framed the pockets with it. And if you think my outfit's peculiar, I'll explain that later. <laughs> This next dress is the one that Instagram wanted to see the most. And for the fabric, I decided to follow the suggestion from Deneen Page. And I went with a shiny all black fabric with a little bit of stretch to it. Fold your fabric in half on a table, then lay on it and trace your upper torso. Add a couple inches to each side, then cut out this general shape. Then take it by the edges and fold it in right at those top corner points. You're going to fold it uh, to one to, to like one of those poster boards you'd see at a science fair. Then on each of those folds, draw a shape which resembles a very mildly curved question mark. Though depending on your size and shape, some of those question marks might be a little more question marky than others. Upon unfolding all of this, you should find yourself in possession of two sets of these three pieces. Now line the question marks back up, right sides facing each other, and sew along those edges. At this point, you should have two bodice pieces, one for yourself and one for your twin sister, but if you ate your twin sister in the womb, then just take those two pieces and place them right sides facing each other and sew along the top. Flip that right side out and you should have one bodice piece, perfect for your twinless self. For the back, you're going to want to draw and cut out two pieces that look like half of a half pipe. Then hem down the edges on each of your ramps and sew them to the main bodice piece. By the way, if you're looking for a simple design to make, this one only took me about half a day, so I highly recommend it. In order to make the back a lace-up bodice, I sewed some fabric into a tube, then cut it into six thumb-length pieces. Then I pinned each of those thumb tubes in arched fashion to the opening of my half pipe. Then I sewed them in place, but if you want this process to be a lot simpler, I recommend just using ribbon. To make the skirt, lay on a folded up piece of fabric and cut it to be the length of your waist to a little past your feet. Now listen closely with your eyes. You're going to pin along the edge of that folded piece of fabric and then flip it so that the pins are going down the middle. Or you could just skip this step and cut the back piece in half later on, but you know, I just wanted to make it crafty, okay? Then trace a fitted skirt around yourself and make it a few inches too big. I know I just said fitted, but listen, you can always take it in, you can't let it out after this point. If you were to unpin and unfold it at this point, you'd end up with three pieces, but don't do that, and if you did do that, repin it all together and try it on, get a better fit, mark it with some chalk or some pins or lipstick. Honestly, you could probably mark it by smearing some yogurt on it. As you can see when sewing along the back, I left the top open for about several or just one butt width long. Next, splay it all out and attach the top to the bottom, right sides together. Make sure it all lines up perfectly. And if you're having trouble with lining it up perfectly, try subscribing to me. My reasoning behind this is, well, there is none, but I feel like it might help. Now, if like me, you possess the same body type as a singular Kit Kat, a great hack to fool the world into thinking you have an hourglass shape would be to take a piece of elastic that is slightly smaller than the circumference of your waist and sew each end of it to the inside of the back of your bodice. Then get distracted by a noise. What is that noise? Latrexa! <laughs> At least you made a healthy choice. To finish the top of the back of the skirt, I added a zipper, but if you find a stretchy enough fabric, you won't have to do that. I'm currently having a hard time getting things done because my mind is consumed with a particular matter. You see, the city called, well, not the city, like the city zone people, zonists, xenon zoners called, and they wanted to let me know that there was a dormant vehicle in my yard. They were referring to this car. They wanted to let me know that it had a flat tire and also that it needed to be removed from the premises. I thought, oh, thanks for letting me know. What's your mailing address? I I'd love to thank you by sending you a big basket of this doesn't concern you. Come on, I can't keep my perfectly good, well, 
perfect besides the brakes and the transmission car in my well my dad's property that i my dad paid for that car was my grandma that's all i have left of her besides this plant and lots of other stuff you know how long it took me to paint this car you know how long it probably took my grandpa to make this ceiling look like a coffin how long it took me to acquire this collection of abc gum look i know it's technically a piece of junk but by my own professional appraisal it is worth approximately 500 million dollars in sentimental value look city's owner i know there are useless rules that you think have to be followed but something happened a few months ago like 2916 months ago where these guys kickstarted a thing called a free country whatever happened to that i'm starting to think i put it perfectly right after i got my wisdom teeth out when i said mm -hmm. I mean, come on, America. So what if it's a rule that you can't put a car in a yard? It's, you know, it's not a car anymore. It's a, it's a historic landmark. So take that, you nosy, unpatriotic zonist. Now back to the dress. Make the straps very long, as long as you think a Teenage Mermaid's fin would be. These will serve as both the straps and the laces for the back. Sew them to the top front corners of your bodice, then lace them through your six tiny St. Louis arches. Tie it in a bow, and voila, you have an adjustable back, which is important if you plan on eating a lot of things. To make it look like you wasted more time and energy on your dress, I recommend beading the neckline and waistline. You could use glue for this process, but I find that with black fabric, dried glue tends to look like bits of snot. And the good news about these beads is you can see they're kind of pokey, so if a guy tries to get too close to you while dancing, he'll get what's coming to him. Oh, and now to explain that extremely patriotic outfit, I suppose I just wanted to make some atonement for all the ire I directed towards America the day before. At this point, I'm finishing my black dress with a rolled hem. Speaking of him, I talked to my dad, who is a him, and I asked him if there's anywhere I can move that would allow me to keep my car, and he said, the country. So I guess I just have to become a country girl in a country world, find myself a country boy. Country boy! And that'll solve it. A simple DIY jewelry piece would be to make a choker with some rhinestone trim and some silver elastic. So we were driving and I just what? found this girl who's actually I going to prom. Me. So I'm gonna get a picture with oh. her to really like complete the look. What's your name? Miley. For this third and final design, you will either need five yards of fabric or two curtain panels. I found mine in the Hobby Lobby clearance section for $3.74 a piece. Okay, now lay out your fabric. That seriously looks like an ocean. Wait. Just pretend this is a boat. Mayday, this is Captain Lutrexa. There's a Loch Ness Monster approaching my boat. I'm going to have to abandon ship. Swim away! So, Bazelda did something that I forgot chickens do. So after you've washed your curtain panel, measure your waist at the smallest part and at the rib cage. Then cut a doubled up strip of fabric that matches those widths and cut it into this shape. Then pin and sew all along the top and bottom of it, leaving the sides open so that you can flip it inside out. Then cut out four identical triangles of fabric that should be about the size of you, your, about, about the size of two slices of pizza put together. Then pin and sew along the sides and top, leaving the bottom open to flip inside out. Then fold each of those pieces in half long ways and draw a slight curve, or a major curve, depending on the size of your- Then sew right along that curve that you drew. Then hold the pizzas up to yourself and make adjustments if needed. Tuck the bottom or the crusts of your pizzas beneath the top of your stomach strip, then top stitch them in place. To begin the skirt, cut out a strip of fabric that is one inch longer than your waist. Then iron it in waistband fashion like we talked about earlier. Fold the curtain or fabric in half to form a square and then cut along the top. To make this video more applicable to the average Joe, or since you're all teenage females, the average Josephine, I didn't use my mannequin and I draped, pinned, and ironed the pleats on myself. Only for the front panel though. Then I sewed those pleats in place, then sewed the unpleated back panel to the pleated front panel along the sides. Then I lined the top of that up with my waistband and then pleated the back so that it would fit into the waistband. Oh, and just in case you're one of those people that likes information, uh, this dress is also a two-piece and it closes along the side. After pinning your waistband over all those pleats, you're going to want to get a full eight hours of sleep. Then the next morning, sew it all down, then cut out two straps about the length of a hatching ball python. Sew them into long straws. Use your tool of choice to turn them inside out. Then sew them to the top corners of your pizza slices. I used hooks and eyes for closures for the top of the skirt and for the back of the bodice, but you could make it a bit... Uh, 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 it's a good thing this video is almost done. I'm losing my ability to speak. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I got a picture on top of a truck just in case there was a chance I could attract a country boy.